What's happening everyone? Today I wanted to talk about just little basics about reefing, three parameters that all the newbies should keep their eyes on. Even professionals are double checking it every single time they'll, they'll test. Those three big parameters are temperature, salinity and alkalinity. You guys are currently looking at my anemone tank. They don't really care about alkalinity to be that stable, but all the if you're keeping any of the other corals, especially SPS and LPS, you want to make sure that alkalinity is pretty stable. I'm going to mention that later. So let me start just from the basics, salinity. People say salinity, what is salinity? What is, what is that? It's just how much salt is uh, mixed in your uh, water. Basically, there's a few ways you can measure your salinity. I've done it for a long time with my uh, reflectometer. There's uh, quite a few products you can purchase. I suggest for you guys to get anything that you can calibrate. That's very important. Anything you get, it should be calibrated actually more often than people think. I check reflectometer every month. I do have a henna carcelinity checker as well that I check my salinity with as well. If you cannot afford few instruments, free products to buy a lot of money to spend, just uh, buy one, calibrate it, have a buddy of yours or find someone from Facebook or even your LFS, have them test it for you just so you can double check that that's on point. As I said, that's very important for beginners to double check that salinity is point because we never know if the product, if the reflectometer or anything else that you use using right now, it's correct. So double check it. I like to keep my salinity at 1.026, 1.025. That's a good range. And the other reef will tell you pretty much the same. There's wiggle room for that depending on what you're keeping. I'm currently talking about reef tanks. So that's gonna a good stable range for corals and reef in general. Salinity, how I'm keeping it stable in this tank, you can do it manually, definitely, for sure. Make it cheap that way. But if you wanna make it stable, what I use is ATO made by Tunzi. It is very good. Only thing that I have to do actually any, if you buy any ATO pump that has a sensor, make sure that you just clean it. What I usually do is just grab a little spray bottle, put regular RO water in it and just spray it every single time I do a water change. Just double check on it, make sure that that sensor is good to go. Again, that's how I keep my salinity stable. It's pretty easy when you get the hang of it, automate it and you'll be You'll make your life very easy. Make sure that your instruments you have are on point and you'll be good to go. All right, temperature. Let's talk about temperature a little bit. Temperature, usually reefers keep their temperature anywhere between 75 and 80. I've seen temperature swing in my tanks anywhere between uh, 76 and 81, 82. I like to keep mine around 77, 78 since it's kind of that middle range. Every single time I see it go too low or too high, I see a little, little problems here and there will pop up so that's why i like to keep it kind of in the mid-range i'll be good to go there how i keep my um, temperature stable is by having a heater in the in the tank some people are doing it just with keeping their room temperature as well that's one way the other way is having heater usually when you decide to get a heater what i suggest because heaters are pretty cheap and they can get bad real quick usually when they get bad they stuck on so that's one of the problems. That's why I suggest for everyone to purchase two heaters, two small ones, for instance, if you need 100 watt heat to heat your tank, you might wanna get two their 50 watts or two their 75 watts. And that way that if one gets bad, one stucks on, it won't heat up your tank. When you get those two heaters, I suggest getting a temperature controller as well, uh, where you're gonna plug those in. And temperature controllers usually come with a little sensor. Not usually, I think every single time. You put your sensor in the water and that's how the temperature controller will check the temperature in the tank. All the stuff I'm saying, it's kind of normal for everyone that's in the reefing, but all you newbies, I'm just telling you guys a little bit extra advice there. There uh, For the temperature, you want to double check it as well. What I have is HANA salinity checker, which uh, comes with temp probe on it as well. I like to double check again, have something that you can double check your temperature with and you'll be good to go there. Make it stable. That's about it as far as temperature goes. Let me talk about alkalinity a little bit. As I said, the, uh, the tank you guys are looking at is just an enemy tank. I do have a few mushrooms there as well, but usually NAMs don't really care about stability 
and alkalinity. How you measure it, but the other quotes do. How I measure my alkalinity, I use the HANA alkalinity checker. It's one of the better ones on the market, but you can use, there's lots of other ones that you can use as well. Lots of easy ones. Usually the easier instrument is easier to use, the more you're gonna use it. So I suggest picking up something that it's reliable and easy to use. Again, I use HANA alkalinity checker, but you guys can purchase anything else and check your alkalinity that way. I wanted to just mention briefly pH because pH is kind of what's driving alkalinity. If you keep your pH stable, your alkalinity will be stable. People talk about the more, the higher you keep your pH, the better it's gonna be for your hard corals. But the tank that you guys are currently looking at, I don't test my pH at all or any other parameter. Actually, I do my water changes once a month and I test nitrogen and phosphates just to make sure they're good. And that's about it. I keep my alkalinity at 8.5 or higher. The higher you keep your alkalinity, the higher the pH is going to be in your tank. The less fish you have in your tank, the higher pH is going to be in your tank. Less people in the room, the bigger the room is, the higher pH is going to be as well. So I mentioned a few things about pH as well, but don't worry about it if you're a beginner about pH. Again, worry about it if you guys are keeping hard corals, but for anything soft corals, even LPS and anemones, I wouldn't worry about it too much. That's about it. Subscribe, give it a like. If you wanna see more videos like this, check me out on Facebook and Instagram. I go over there by Refund of the Roof. You guys take care. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Let me know. We're gonna have a discussion down below. All right.